Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies. Today we're going to be doing a tune-up on a 1997 5.7 liter Chevy Silverado C1500. This will be the same on many years makes models with the uh, similar engine. So the 5.0, the 5.7s, um, I think that's it, there's probably more. This should be all the same. As long as they have the crab style uh, distributor cap. In the video, we will be replacing or pulling out the spark plugs, replacing the wires, here the cap and the rotor. When we do take these off or when we take everything off once at, one at a time, you want to inspect everything. Like inside this rotor right here, you're going to look for wearing on the prongs sticking through onto the bottom side so that your rotor could spin around and hit the distributor and distribute the spark where needed. Um, you're trying to find wear, excessive wear. Uh, reason being, you want to make sure that whatever problem you're chasing, if you are chasing one, that this will fix the issue. So say you find a lot of buildup in here or on one of these prongs or one's fried out, this might let you know that you are fixing a misfire. Also check your plugs, sorry, your wires. On this one, the coil wire was toast. You can see that right there. So we were chasing a misfire. I'm thinking we found it, but check your spark plugs as well. You want to check the gap on all of them. You want to see if they're wet, if they're dry, if they got a bunch of uh, gunk build up on it. That can let you know different problems of your vehicle or what is going on other than just a tune-up need. And you might need something else such as injectors or something else like that. So just make sure you're very observant when you're doing your job. Let's get started on this one. Like I said, this will be the same on many years makes and models from the Chevy trucks. Uh, the vans might be the same, SUVs, anything with the 5057 with the crab style uh, distributor. Let's get going. Quick, easy. Here we go. Using my spark plug wire pliers, I'm removing all of the spark plug wires from all of the spark plugs all the way around the engine. They're not the easiest thing to remove, especially if they've been fried on over time. It takes a little umph and some elbow grease to get them off, but of course it's doable. You're going to obviously go all the way around the engine, remove all of your spark plug wires. Conveniently on the cap, the spark plugs, or I should say the cylinders are notated on the cap on these, which is pretty convenient. Remember, if you do need any parts or tools shown in the video, look for a link in the description to buy them. Again, we're gonna remove these spark plugs. I'm only doing the front two on this side to show you for video's sake. The spark plugs that we removed were in pretty tight, so whoever did this job last didn't torque them down to factory specifications, or I don't think they did. But oh well. A little bit of umph. Spark plugs come right out. Hopefully. If you strip them out, uh, you can get a thread chaser and chase those threads back in. When you remove each plug, make sure you inspect them. You're going to look for moisture on your spark plug, either oil or fuel. Check your gap. Make sure that your gap is out, I should say. You don't want to find one with a good gap. And actually, in this engine, I removed these plugs, and the gap was perfect. These plugs were pretty new. Somebody replaced these plugs to make it run better so they could sell it. But you want to inspect everything that you remove. You want to be able to find the problem that you're chasing. Make sure that you are removing that issue. This front plug was a little difficult. You're going to need a bunch of different extensions and adapters to make it easy to access each plug. They're not all equally hard or equally easy. They, they have their own little uh, difficulty, I should say. Remove your front spark plug. Again, you're going to need swivels and extensions to gain access easily. When you remove the spark plug, you're going to check for moisture, dryness, anything that would let you read how the internal combustion is going on. Remove your rear spark plug wires off your spark plugs. These are the hardest two cylinders to get to on this whole job. You have that steering knuckle right there in your way, which makes it, this job way more enjoyable. 
here I removed the spark plug wire off of that spark plug. Let's get this furthermore spark plug wire off. If your vehicle is lifted up a little bit, you might be able to gain access through the wheel well. If you have longer extensions or longer pliers, that make it, might make it a little bit easier for you. Now with all the wires off right here, we can remove the clips that hold your spark plug wires and keep them separated. If any of these do break, you don't have to be too worried about it. You can use some zip ties to fasten them, but you do not want your spark plug wires to rub on each other or run onto each other. So you gotta make sure that you have a separator between the two. Very commonly they do break though. So don't be too afraid or scared or mad if you do break them. Get everything nice and loose so we could pull them off when we remove the distributor. With the wires dangling here on the driver's side, let's move over to the passenger side. First, we're gonna remove the air box, air cleaner, and the whole plastic intake assembly. Right here, I am taking the master or flow center connection off, using that flat head to push on it, give me some more leverage. Here you have a wing nut at the top of your throttle body, remove that. Oh, there we go. Set that off to the side somewhere we're going to lose it or forget it. Remove your hose going to the valve cover. That is your intake for the PCV system. This whole big plastic assembly with the air filter, set that off to the side. Now your lower air cleaner box, you're going to remove in just a second. First, you want to put something over your throttle body so no debris gets inside of the intake stuff a towel on there preferably a lint free towel like i'm using right there slide the lower intake off slides right out you're going to slide it towards the engine and it'll pop right out now you have plenty of room to work on the passenger side again we're going to remove all the spark plug wires from the spark plugs the spark plug pliers help you a lot they might even be listed as hose pliers you're gonna remove all these spark plug wires. After you do that, go ahead and remove your spark plugs. When you do that, make sure you inspect all the spark plugs like you did on the driver's side. Got all four of them removed. As we could see, loosen the plastic clips, the separators and retainers on the passenger side. Again, if you break them, you can make new separators. No big deal. Everything's just going to dangle. You want to make it nice and loose because when you remove your distributor, you want it to slide up as easy as possible. Like spaghetti coming out of the engine. Here is your distributor on the back of your engine between the firewall and the engine. You got two Torx bits that are not the easiest to get to. You need a shorter screwdriver with your T15, I believe, link for a part in the description. Before we take off your distributor or your Dizzy, let's make sure you disconnect the coil or the wire going to the coil from the distributor. That's what sends your spark to the distributor and then the distributor distributes the spark as needed. Here we have our Torx on a shorter screwdriver. Some distributors do have a security Torx that they use on these. That is a Torx bit with a circle or a hole in the center of it. A shorter screwdriver works great in this situation, but you do need to be able to get a lot of leverage. Make sure you push down and turn at the same time. You do not want to strip this screw out. This will give you a huge headache if you do. So make sure Lots of pressure pushing down and then turn. Always make sure I get them both a little bit loose before I pull them all the way out in case something does happen to where I have to tighten it back up. They're both right there, a little bit easier, but hopefully you don't run into that scenario. This back one is a little bit harder than the front one. This is why you need the shorter screwdriver. You can see my screwdriver is hitting the top of the firewall right there, making it a little bit more difficult for me. With, if you watch the video of the installation of the distributor, you'll notice I'm using a little bit shorter screwdriver, make it a little bit more convenient for me.
Now we have the Dizzy completely disconnected with the distributor completely off. You can pull directly up on the distributor at this point. Make sure you don't hook any other wires or rip on it too hard so you don't break anything else and make your job a lot harder. You're going to string your spark plug wires out on both sides. This is where it's like the spaghetti come out of the engine. Weird analogy, but this is what it looks like kind of. You're going to pull everything out as one. That's what I like to do. So I make sure my wires are on. Everything's all there on the distributor cap on the old one and the new one. They're both labeled with which cylinders each plug goes to, which makes it way easier. That's one reason why I like having Chevy's. Now with your distributor completely out, you could check your wires for any abnormal wear. Look inside of your distributor and make sure you don't have any abnormal wear inside that as well or check for buildup on these, you might find the problem that you have been chasing. Here on your rotor, the T15 Torx is what is gonna take it to remove it as well. Loosen both of these screws. Always make sure they get loose before I take it completely out. You don't wanna run into another stripped screw situation here. It'll be the end, a lot of work right now. So be very careful right here. When you tighten them down, don't go too tight, nice and snug. This one is going to pop right out. I'm going to replace it with a nice new shiny gray one. Make sure you look for a link in the description to buy the parts shown in my video. If my video did help you out, please make sure you like, subscribe, share, comment below with the year, make, and model engine size that this video was able to help you out on. I really appreciate your view. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and share.